Welcome, 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 welcome. You guys, uh, you guys feeling this, man? I mean, are we back in two shows a week mode? Do you yeah. feel it, or, or yes. are you sore? Are you sore from? <laughs> are you <laughs> sore from Monday? Can well, you come back? Wait a minute. My jaw's a little bit. I mean, that's yeah. the question. Are we in shape? Are we ready to go two a week? Got lollygag around in the summer, right? Steal shows, <laughs> pre-record shows a week in advance, then put them out, sit around with our feet up for a week. Now they're just. Well, we. We didn't do any two-a-days to get ready, so. Mountaineers are into their two-a-days. We'll talk about that. Over-unders, part two. Look forward to that. Got a good response from uh, part one on that. Plus, Brad was Brad was disappointed in his setup, so we'll see what happens. What was that? There was some. No, I was, I was more disappointed that we agreed on two of the three. Oh. That's what I was disappointed oh, in. Oh, okay. The thousand-yard Russian one was too easy. Yeah, I'll admit that. That's, That's too easy. That's okay. Okay. Usually give you about one a year, where as soon as it's out of my mouth, I'm like, well, that wasn't a good one. That was, that was too it's easy. It's still early season. Too you easy. know, it's okay. Getting reps in. Week one to week two, you we'll improve get, the we'll most. Get better. Yeah. We'll get better. Three guys before the game it is brought to us <laughs> by Comax Business System, keeping West Virginia, keeping West Virginia's business data Keep safe, secure, and efficient for 25 years. By Tudor's Biscuit World, start your day the homemade way. With a Tudor's biscuit. Didn't they win a Southern National Championship, Tony? World World World's Championship. World's Championship. We'll talk about that later. Three guys also brought to us by GoMart. Get yourself a GoMart Rewards card and instantly save money. That's right. Save on fuel. Save on food. Get the app, the GoMart app, or just go to GoMart.com. Get the details. And uh, you got to start up, sign up for that Mountaineer Man Trip. We're now what? Eight days away from the deadline to sign up to win that. Three guys also brought to us by Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans. They sell family fun. Visit LouWendellMarineSales.com. Those guys are doing great. What a tremendous boost for their business this summer as Lou Wendell provided all of the boats that you saw in the opening ceremonies of the Olympics. <laughs> hold on. Hold, it's, that that's was, unconfirmed. Lou Wendell right down the middle of... Right there in Paris. Did well with the rain. Yeah, just yeah. had navigated everything. Yeah. Three guys also brought to us by Conley CPA Group, providing value beyond numbers. That's the Conley CPA Group, and they're uh, part and parcel to this uh, to this deal of over unders with Brad. All right, before we uh, before we get into football, as we were just getting ready to uh, hit the uh, red button to record here. WVU Athletic Department announcing that this coming season in sport for the university will be dedicated in honoring the late Jerry West. And it's not just in basketball. It's every WVU sport. And uh, this is a heck of a um, heck of a concept and heck of an idea. And so as the release says, some knew him as Mr. Clutch, others referred to him as the logo to the WVU Department of Intercollegi- Intercollegiate Athletics. He is simply the greatest mountaineer ever. Yes. Ever. So they're going to honor Jerry West throughout the upcoming season. And one thing is they will announce a, a specific weekend men's basketball game that will dedicate to his memory and legacy. That's just one thing. Also, every team... Every sports team at WVU this year will have 44 on their uniform. And uh, season ticket holders, dedicated Mountaineer fans, will also be able to purchase a mini replica of the famous Jerry West statue that sits outside the Blue Gate. Ticket holders who purchase mini replica statues will also be able to receive it at the selected game. The men's team will wear the Jerry West throwback uniforms in a game to be determined that they wore back in 04 when they West Virginia celebrated 100 years of basketball. Yeah, that that uh, there's a lot of neat things going on there, Hop, we can talk yeah. about, but that, that one's going to be cool. Oh, Throwing yeah. those more, the, the more royal blue jersey than, mm-hmm. the, than the Navy. That was a lot of fun in, in 2004 when we broke those out. I'm glad <laughs> glad to see those making a return. And that is, that is so appropriate because uh, when Wes died earlier this year, and I, we talked about it, I wrote about it, and the first thing was I never th- contemplated his death like he, he would, that West would always be there. Yeah. Right. He would always be there. And th- th- throughout his career, whether it was for G- well, high school in West Virginia and the pros and his general manager, Brad, 
that he was he was always there, and no matter what, no matter what disparaging thing was said about West Virginia, no matter how much West Virginia suffered, no matter how much criticism West Virginia got, there was always Jerry West, who was undeniably yeah. one of the greatest basketball players ever. It was not debatable. Right. So you always had that. You always had that. That's a great point. Great point. So this is that's really neat. That's a heck of an honor. We've seen a lot of times different individual teams honor folks with with numbers, but to do it across every sport that speaks to just how big of a figure Jerry West was. Yeah. Ren Baker had a uh, statement in the release through his lifetime of commitment to West Virginia University and its academic and athletic mission. The great Jerry West has touched the lives of thousands of our student athletes, and that's why every team will honor this season. Good call. He's the greatest mountaineer ever. His outstanding legacy is large, and he will always be beloved, remembered in the hearts of all West Virginians. So that came out just a little bit ago today. So every WVU team will wear the 44, and then they'll do other things and bring back the uh, the old school. As you said, that's a neat color. I like that color. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Got that purplish. Different, cool. I think the players will really get into that. I think fans will love seeing that. That'll be neat. Well, they wear the short shorts. No, no, although the style is going back a little bit yeah, shorter. It is. It, has, yeah, it, yeah, is. it is trending back away from yeah. the, the super baggy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it'll be as short, though. All right, we jump into uh, Mountaineer football over-unders and um, went to practice yesterday, and we talked about this yesterday as well. Jaden Bray had a practice, a wide receiver transfer from Oklahoma State that was just uh, above and beyond. I, he, just, he took over. Like every eye on the field was him. Offensive guys, defensive guys are like looking at because he just got, he got like scalding hot, like hot so hot that you had to put a welding helmet on, otherwise it'd burn your eyes. That's how hot he got. He made some catches. Finished that strong. Just, he made like I said. The analogy was at the end of the uh, gold medal game for the uh, men's basketball team this past weekend. Steph Curry just like he just went yeah. off. Mm-hmm. That's what that's what Bray did. Good. That's what Bray did. That's what you now, need again. That's one practice on one afternoon, and it's practice. And it wasn't full scrimmage, but it showed you that within him that he can he can make some he can make big boy plays. And so you just hope that translates into a game. Good point. How many times do you see it? Can you see it consistently? All the questions, but the fact that it's there. And he's a he's a guy. We've talked about him a bunch. He's a guy, we think the guys we saw last year on this roster will step forward. He's a guy that's come in and done it at this level. Now, can he go from the 30 catches he was? Does that get to 45? What's that look like? Not not an official over-under. I was just going to say, not is that, are you over-under? No, 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 he's no just, just no. ran out of shows. Could do more of these. Could have done receiver catches. Who leads the team but didn't get there. But Bray, I, I'm looking forward to watching Bray. And, and how many times have we talked about over the, over the last several years, Brad, of the receiver making a play? Right? I mean, the quarterback can't do it all. At some point, it's just... A, it's just Why do you shut your microphone? Why do you shut your microphone? Because I was about to sneeze, but off the phone. You shut your microphone off again. Why is he doing that? Because I was going to sneeze, but the camera was still on me. I didn't want to sneeze on camera. Dude, this is a podcast. This isn't Hoppy show. You can sneeze. You can cough. You can do whatever you need to do. It's a podcast. That's what it's made for. It makes Hoppy crazy. Quarterback throw can't be there every time. Right. So, Sometimes so the receivers point, the have to go get The point is the one-on-one, go get it. Go get it. Make a play. And who can make a play? Correct. Right? That's totally agree. Yeah. Kevin White-esque. Yes. That's yes. what it was. Yeah. It was Kevin White-esque. Speaking of practice, we had a good uh, good visit with one of the uh, friends of the show yesterday at practice. I saw that. Saw that on the, twi- yeah. on the Twitter, on the yeah. X. Charles Wesley Godwin uh, was at practice, and uh, he, he enjoyed it. He enjoyed it. And uh, oh look, oh look, who's that with uh, Brad and Tony? Oh, is that Charles? Oh, <laughs> great dude, loves his football, loves his Mountaineers. Yeah, so he's just getting ready to wrap up. Hoppy, he's doing uh, he's doing Tupelo, Mississippi, wow. St. Louis, and what was the other one? Was it Kansas City? Kansas City, really? Then that's it. Summer tour closed. We can take a little break, right? He's going to perform next Saturday at the uh, Country Roads Trust fundraiser at the stadium. Oh, really? Yeah, he's going to have a couple of his dudes with him. Awesome. Awesome. You might want to step up and buy a ticket for that. Support. I mean, just by supporting your alma mater, supporting the athletic It is teams. my alma mater, yeah. Yes, it is. So it was great to see him. We asked him how the uh, Mountaineer Roasting Coffee 
was being <laughs> – I did. I he, said – This is true. He actually he did I said, so, it. like, are people, when they drink it, are they going, like, holy cow, is this great coffee? He said, yes, but they really love the setup of the portable espresso machine that's got its own case. Nice. He goes, tour managers, like, come through. <laughs> they come through our, like, area, and they go, like, whoa. So he said, that will become a staple for – traveling music groups that they were like we want what charles has we want one of those portable espresso machines you have that we have that special made or was that no it's you can get that in italy, you get that? In italy oh, it's, really? made, it's got yeah. its own carrying case it like does. like the radio gear when we used to go on the road <laughs> exactly. the big radio cases yes. hop yeah. right it's a it's a pelican case hop i mean it's basically it's, it's a cool. it's like an anvil it is no it's an anvil case is what oh, it okay. is and they just pick the thing up now we did not confirm that luke combs has our coffee on his bus forgot to I ask think, him i that. think we're efforting on that we forgot to Look, ask. There it is. Him there's that. a setup. Yeah, there's a setup. See, so it's in that case, and that just thing. It's, those are great. Like you can't break that case. So. So you could drop it. Well, you could. Wouldn't I mean? I wouldn't suggest it, but you can see it all locks up. They just put the top back on, and off they go. We got to get him the big bag. Huh? That well, that, that might not. That that's not enough to cover the whole group no, there isn't. for multiple nights. We got to get him. The, he's got to have. The are big we five not pound giving bag. him five pound I, bags? I, we got. I got to confirm that. We got to get in on that. He's got to have the five pound bag. To, and just to show you, like, he's, like, doing it right. I said, how many grams of uh, how many grams of beans are you using on your espresso? He goes, 20. I said, okay, fine. He had it right down the back. You know, rusty over at roasting, he says 19 grams. So if, if – if, Oh, you have it down that? Oh, yeah. You got to weigh your grams so you get the right dose. So then you get the right shot. Yeah. Do you have the way, I, went ice, I went iced again. Excuse me, huh? Oh, a nice little afternoon ice kick with our coffee. Yeah. Do you have an espresso maker? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I oh, made, the, made the senator. I, I did have one. Every Did morning. You? Every morning. Start no, every morning. I, I open you, up. I don't you serve coffee morning. to him? He, yeah. No, 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 no. I make it every morning. Well, he ordered an Uber back when he had that cosmetic surgery, that plastic surgery he had done to improve yeah. his looks. Yeah. <laughs> he needed a ride, so he called an Uber. So I just said, I, I got you. I'm in the area. So he came up, picked just me up. Just finished my shift at Daniel's. I'll come over, pick you up. And so I said, come on in here. I'll make you coffee. Oh, oh, nice. So I made him one with almond milk, and he liked it. That was, it was good. good. It was good. It was good. Yeah. Yeah, I like it a lot. I do have to say that. No. Oh. He did a nice job. Good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Not received any tips yet. Uh, time now to jump into our over and unders part two. And our over under and uh, all spreads on stats are brought to us by, well, so well, 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 well. We'll just go right to the numbers. Here comes Why not? Here. Let's jump into the uh, analytics portion of the show. Spreads on stats is brought to us by the Conley CPA Group. They provide value beyond numbers, complete public service accounting and consulting, serving clients throughout West Virginia and surrounding states. I'm a strong advocate of their outsourcing accounting and their CFO services. So what's that all mean? Well, if you need help doing your internal accounting, they can do it all or they can help you come in and they can outsource. You can say, hey, take care of this or... CFO services. You need a chief financial officer, don't want to have the expense or having someone on property to do that? They'll come in and they'll outsource your CFO with Conley CPA Group. Wonderful people. They'll be 40 years old coming up in 2025. You know? Like them a lot. Local. Local people. Locally owned. Now, I don't know if you know this hobby, but these what? these accounting firms, they just continue to get bought up, bought up, bought up, bought mm-hmm. up, bought up by other outside yeah. entities. These guys like local. They put their flag down the ground. They says West Virginia dirt for us. Well, they'll take care of people outside the state, but they're West Virginia owned. Good for them. Yeah. Are these are these good? We'll see. I like them. You're gonna have to dig in here with me on number one. Okay. What does that mean? Well, I got a, I got a lot of stuff. <laughs> I, got, I got a lot of stuff on this first one. All right. Hoppy, I actually had yes. to stop myself because it was, you know. You were getting away, got, carried away? Well, I got, got in there, and there's just some really interesting numbers that go along with this first one. So here's where we're starting. All right. Had to go with our guy, Garrett Green. Sure. Hadn't, hadn't asked a Garrett Green question left yeah. yet. A lot of ways we can go, obviously. Rushing yards, passing yards, touchdowns. There's, there's Again, I wish we could do nine of these shows because I'd, I'd hit him in a bunch of categories. But I thought we'd get in the weeds a little bit, Hop. Okay. That's something new. So we're going to look at a specific stat from Pro Football Focus, and we've talked a lot about it on the shows over the years, especially last year. It's big time throws, BTT, big time throws. It's defined as a pass with excellent ball location and timing 
generally thrown further down the field and or into a tighter window. Okay? All right. A PFF, proprietary stat, big time throws. Garrett was elite last year in this category. I mean elite, guys. Third in the nation. He had 31 big time throws. 31 of them. First in the country. Michael Penix. Have you heard of him from Washington? Yeah, Yeah, he played for the world's championship. Second in the country, Drake May, Carolina. West Virginia didn't face him, but Um, you might have heard of him. We are familiar with him. First-round NFL draft pick. I'm absolutely thrilled that we didn't play him. Yeah, Garrett was just behind those two. That was it. Penix, May, and Garrett. Which means, Hoppy, Garrett had more big-time throws, more explosive throws downfield than Heisman winner Jaden Daniels did last year. So this is one of those categories when we say, and and people ask me this all the time, why I, I... how I like these stats, why I got in these stats, why do I gravitate? This is one of the reasons, Hop. Instead of us just sitting up here saying, tell you what, Garrett Green was elite last year. He had an awesome season. You like, put a little he meat. He had a national good season. You quantify There's some it. context you there. Quantify you put some it. meat under yeah, there. Yes. I, I think that's a fun way to analyze is you can take some of these numbers and say, we're not just bloviating. I mean, we are bloviating, but it's not just bloviation up here. It's look at this. So look, you, at, look at where he's stacked yeah. up in that category that grades difficult right. big-time throws, hence so the name. You, so you don't want to come on here and just say, like, Garrett's good and stuff? I think Garrett's really good. I think he's going to have a good season. <laughs> yeah, he's good. You put meat to it. We try and put some numbers behind it, and I just think it, it adds some context, Hop, to when we Absolutely. say Garrett had a really Wonderful. good year. right? Yes. You, Everybody listening to this saw last year Garrett Green had a really good year, and you can see the raw – Counting stats, as they're often called, Tony. Counting stats. Those are regular rushing man yards, stats. rushing touchdowns. Yeah. But now you get down in here a little bit, and that's one of the things I like about Pro Football Focus. This particular, this particular stat's a fun one to watch. All right, so he had 31 of those big time throws last year, number three in the country. So here's our question: As we enter the 2024 season, with what's that mean that he was third last year behind those guys? He's the top returning big T tier. Very, very good. Quick Thank pickup by you. You were you. locked in again early like well, look, you were last year. Look show. what I do. Uh, you were, he locked in. I took notes. I take he, notes. By the way, at practice the other day, we were talking about yeah. the, this. Our, our over-under rushing attempts came up yeah. with some different folks at practice. Your boy over here started quoting the numbers like I was doing it. Really? He was absolutely listening last week. Now, I think that was the only category he listened in, <laughs> but he was dialed in. <laughs> dialed in again. All right. Garrett returns, nation's leader in big-time throws. Here's our question. Will he go over or under 33-and-a-half big-time throws this season? It was 31 last year. 33-and-a-half is the number. Now, before you answer, this is where you got to bear with me a little bit. We'll come back to your answer, but here's some numbers because this is where I started to get really deep into Boy, it. Boy, you, you are well, so th- This is pretty amazing. Only Penix and May went over that number last year. What's kind of interesting, Penix's previous high was just 27. But both those, only two guys in the country went over this 33 and a half number last year. There were five first round picks in last year's NFL draft. Penix, Bo Nix, Caleb Williams, J.J. McCarthy, Jaden Daniels. Only May was able to have that many big time throws in two different seasons. Wow, that's a great stat. Think about that. It is. Only Penix and Williams, plus May, got to that number one at least once. <laughs> that's that's a mass of the 31. I almost thought of putting the number lower yeah. than 31 because he, again, what? that's a massive number that Garrett picked up last year. Hold on one, one sec. Okay. I know okay. you got okay. a question here. But, but wait, me. there's more. Only three quarterbacks passed that number in 2022. Drake May was one of them. Heisman winner that year, Caleb Williams, did not get to that many Big time throws. Okay, I've got some more stuff to talk about. But go ahead. Right, with your what question. Was, so, what was what was Penix's number last year? Uh, and what was May's number? You asked me too soon. I'm sorry, because I think that's relevant. That I was think a very I've got fair that question, Toppy. Yeah, it is a good question. Keep you, talking, and I'll, I'll okay, get well, it. Okay. I, I just th- that will determine. I think yeah, I know where wh- you're. I think I know where you're going on this. You probably do. I think I know where you're you going. Probably on this. do. I mean, look, if if Penix was at you know. 35 and May was at 34, then it, that affects. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. So Penix was at 43. What? 43 well, big they were time throws. They were unbelievable. Dr- yeah, they were unbelievable. Drake May at 35. Okay. 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 He- here's some more. Let's just, while you're, while you're considering that, let's, let's do some more things here. Can I gunk it up even more? Sure. What was May the previous year before his 35 last year? Because you said he went back to back. 
Yep, he did. He he went more than he did. So he went as a two years ago. He's probably was he thirty something. Forty five. He went forty five thirty five. Holy yeah. cow! And do you know who was fourth and what was their number? Do you know when that? last year? Yeah. Okay. Good questions. Keep throwing stuff at you here. Sorry okay. about that, but right. and okay. when he was in seventh. Okay, what did you ask me? Fourth last year? Yeah. Yeah, Preston Stone from SMU. Okay. He returns. He had thirty. Okay. So he was close to Garrett, one behind. So you're saying th- the number's thirty three and a half. Yeah. Here, here's some other interesting things. Let's let's dive into this, and then we can kind of work through the reasons why that may go up or the reasons why that may come back a little bit. We've talked about the Big 12 having a great quarterback class this season to put some of this in perspective. Mm-hmm. Shador Sanders is a guy a lot of people are talking about. Heisman winner, maybe the first pick in the draft. Ah, da, 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 Shador Sanders had 23 big-time throws last year in an offense that chucked it a lot. Rocco Becht. Had an unbelievable freshman year. He's rightfully so getting a lot of talk this season. He had 14 big-time throws last year. Avery Johnson, hop. Mm -hmm. A lot of people raving about him. Split some time with Will Howard. Mm -hmm. Had three big-time throws last year. Which, speaking of which, Will Howard, uh, who's now all due respect to Will, somehow Ohio State's quarterback now. (laughs) <laughs> starting quarterback. What, what do you mean by and that? And is somehow listed all, at draft. He said all due respect. But, but he, I said all due respect. Here's my thing. He's Ohio State starting quarterback. A lot of people think Ohio State's best team in the country. Right. right. Spent four hundred and twelve billion dollars in NIL reportedly right. in the offseason. A little bit more. Will now. Howard's the quarterback. He has the six best Heisman odds all of a sudden. Will Howard has the six best Heisman odds simply because he's at Ohio State. He did not come up with that number last year. He went in close. Dylan Gabriel, no longer at o, at Oklahoma, now at Oregon. He's the favorite for the Heisman right now at DraftKings. He had just 21 big-time throws last year. Second-best Heisman odds right now, Carson Beck, back at Georgia, had just 17 big-time throws last year. One last stat. I know I'm killing you with numbers, but one last stat. Because, again, I, as much as we talked about Garrett, we might have underrated what an unbelievable season the dude had last year. 10% of his total passes qualified as a big-time throw. 10% of every pass thrown or of his total passes. That was the highest percentage of passes in the entire country last year for any quarterback that played more than six games. Wow. So he not only made a ton of of passes at 31, his percentage of those big-time throws as a as a percentage of his total throws was the best in the country. What and So Penix had more, but his percentage wasn't as high. Do, May had more percentage of his total throws weren't as high. And def- just an incredible d- Define year. BTT again. Define it again. What it means? Big time throw. Yeah. Yeah. It is defined as a pass with excellent ball location and timing, generally thrown further down the field or into a tighter window. So what they're trying to do there is sometimes the quarterback makes a perfect throw and it doesn't end up into a completion. Maybe it's batted away. Maybe the receiver drops it. It doesn't necessarily turn into a touchdown or a big play, but that's not the quarterback's fault. He put the throw exactly where the throw had to be. Does that does that number surprise you because his completion percentage was was kind of low by national standards? Was 53%. Right. So does it su- but what lo- but, well, what, so it doesn't have to do with completions. Yeah, it wasn't is what it, wasn't was low it, is the percentage of times he went over the top, top on big plays and okay. went, how about that big time throw? Okay. How about that throw downfield? Cuz that's the part we talked about. Okay. Yeah, would you like a few more completions underneath? Absolutely you would, and we'll talk about that. But his ability to get it down deep and receivers to make plays down there, he was, he was as good as there was in the country last year with it. So now start to go through that. I, it, the numbers themselves make it really hard to see being able to match that a second season, mm-hmm. right? So your, your natural, I think, inclination was to say, my gosh, that's, that's got to be under. Can he have another season that was that good, that was one of the best two or three quarterback seasons in the country? from that that number and you could argue the best when you take that percentage but you've got better receivers more experienced receivers you're going to get some guys downfield you think throw it into tighter windows you might throw it underneath a little bit more into some tighter windows that qualify for these so you can throw this thing five or eight yards and it still could be considered a big time throw most of the time it's down the field as the definition says generally thrown further down the field but into a tight window is one. We saw it practice yesterday. He threw one on the sidelines to Preston Fox where the defender was right there. I mean, the window was inches, and he threaded it right in there. Okay. 33 and a half is the number. He had 31 last year. Hop, where are you going? Wow. Hey, Brad, first of all, uh, good intel, good deep dive, 
Thank you. It makes it harder. It's helpful, but also makes it harder, if that makes sense. I, I'm just, I'm going to go, I'm going to take the field and go under. You know, I, I just think that, that, and I'm not even sure why. I mean, those numbers are all over the place. Like May was at 35, but Penix was at 43, but Penix threw it all over the place. Um, you should, you should have a solid run. I'm just, I'm going under. I mean, 33 and a half, I'm going under. Everything within me is screaming, go under. Everything. Right. But, however, (laughs) however, since it does not mean that he has to complete the pass, but Mm -hmm. he has to put it into the window of where it's supposed to be. Oh, this is very intuitive. Very good. Very insightful. I talked to the head ball coach this morning, and I said, okay, we've been wanting – the big goal for him, Garrett, was the short and the intermediate route improvement. He says, absolutely, is it, it is improved, right? It is improved. So, with that being the case, I say everything in me says to go under this. I'm going to go over, just to go over. Okay. I just feel like he's throwing the ball extremely well, and whether they catch it or not, He's doing his job. I'm going to go over. Great. Great points by both of you. So one of the things I was was batting around is just trying to land on a side of this, that throwing the ball underneath and being better from a completion percentage, I, I don't think there's any question that happens this year. So that may limit some of those I was down the that. field because I do think that's better. And I think the offense will continue to be really good, but it may not look as explosive last year because you're you're better underneath and your receivers do a better job of getting open underneath so those underneath patterns may be a little more open even than they were last year it's just the numbers tell you go under can he make three big time throws a game yeah can he yeah that's 39 but do you think defenses have access to this information too are they aware that west virginia like to go deep and that garrett's really good at throwing it deep right they they're probably aware of that as well but i think the receiver group being more experienced is is ahead of where it was last year, and you still had a number like this. I'm kind of with you. I, I think the play would be, if this were a real number at a book, professional gamblers would be screaming at you if you took the over, mm-hmm. right? Because they like the mm-hmm. under anyway. Under is probably the way to go because it would be not only an historic season last year, he'd be backing it up with another yeah, historic right. season. That's hard for anybody. I don't care who you are. Uh, but I, th- I think he's a lot better this year too. I think he's improved a ton. As good as he was last year, I think he's he's going to be a better quarterback than what he was. I'm I'm going to I'm going to echo what you said. It's probably not the right move. The numbers probably tell you to go under. I'm going to go over. Some of that's maybe speaking into existence, but I'm going to go over. We'll find out. Let's uh, let's track that every game. Oh, we got people, we got groups of people oh, standing right. by. We talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I got. It. Okay. We will. Okay. Yeah. So you'll say each week. I, I want to be I want to be wrong. By yeah. the way. Well, I, I understand that. It's, it's isn't about. This isn't about your support of Garrett Green. You think he's a wonderful dude and a Absolutely, great quarterback. Yeah. It's just this is why we try and look at the numbers. You try and take a little emotion out of it, which I did not do. I did not take well, the emotion out of it. You know, I I did because I was about to say I'm a fanboy and I'm going over, you know, 50, whatever. But the the play is under. If he turns around with another season like this and gets, gets over 30 in his top five, that's amazing. It was amazing what he did last year. And again, this is one number. There'll be more as we go on in this program. There's other things you can look at with Garrett that weren't just, hey, that was a really good West Virginia starting quarterback, or that was a really good Big 12 quarterback. He had a national elite level season last year. He really should, guys, listen, now I'm going to get killed from all the people that say we're carrying the water for the program. He, he should be on a Heisman, a dark horse Heisman list this year, in my opinion. Now, probably can't win it because you got to play in the national championship game to be really in contention. The dude had a year like that and returns and is better weapons and it will be better. He should be getting some Dark Horse That's Heisman fair. talk. Absolutely. So, you guys, before the game is brought to us by Lou Wendell Marine Sales. They happen to be the state's largest pontoon boat dealer here in the state of West Virginia. You know, we talk about elite, Garrett being elite. Lou Wendell, they are the elite of the elite family owned for four decades. And, you know, now they got these Gator Tough John Series boats. Yeah, we showed up. Were you here when uh, Hoppy, we yeah. broke out some of those pictures? Yeah. yeah. Those are some nice boats. The Gator Tough John Series. Durability, dependability, and value. Yeah, they are. Look at that bad boy nice. there. You just you feel like a man when you're out there standing on top of that thing. The key elements, 
needed for an avid outdoorsman, G3 Johns provide an array of all welded models for hunting to fishing, everything in between. So besides the pontoons, the Gator Tough John Series, take that book of that boy, G3s at Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans. Three guys also brought to us by Comax Business Systems. You know, I'm getting ready to get in my heavy print mode. Yeah. A lot of printing. I do a lot of printing. Brad does a lot of printing this time of the year. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, when we come in here with textual healing, I just beat the hell out of our printer upstairs. <laughs> like, I, I print so many sheets. Printer comes back, a dialogue message that says, serious, dude? And that's how many <laughs> sheets I print. Well, if you need business equipment, Comax Business Systems got you covered. And plus, remote monitoring of all of your IT services and digital phone systems. If you're a business owner and need a digital phone system, we strongly encourage you just to give them a call and get a price quote. It's free in any way you need to get it. Whether you need to lease, buy, purchase, whatever whatever we want to do, rent, they got it. It's ComaxWV.com. All right, over under number two. Okay, here we go. Let's talk. Uh, these are, by the way, these become basically, these have become calculus equations. It's, it's hard to top number one, but you go. All right, let's talk offense still. Tight end, touchdown, catches. Oh, boy. Oh boy. We love having this discussion. Cole Taylor will have five and a half touchdown catches in 2024. Over or under? Five and a half touchdown catches for Cole Taylor. Last year, Taylor had four last season, and I'm not sure a big enough deal was made about him getting to four. That led the team. But it was the most touchdown catches by a West Virginia tight end since 1999. That's a quarter of a century. Most touchdown catches by a tight end hop since 99. Was that our, Beck? Our buddy Anthony Beck had five in 1999. There were eight touchdown catches for tight ends over the previous 10 seasons prior to last year. Tight ends only had two touchdown catches since Neil arrived. Is that, that's a yeah. heck of a stat. Yeah. Now you can see how much more valuable it's becoming, and they well, have the personnel to, to there, do so. There literally weren't any tight ends. Right. When he took yeah. the program over. That's part of why that number <laughs> looks like it does. There just weren't a lot of tight ends on the schedule. You started to see a resurgence of this with Trayvon Wesco in 2018, but that team just had so many other weapons to catch touchdowns. So Trayvon had two catches in 2018. Cody Clay had two in 2013. Tyler Urban had two touchdown catches in eight and 11. Will Johnson had two back in 2010. Torrey Johnson had two in 2002. So getting to four was actually – a really big number for this. Neil got here, tight end room in the building over there, Pushkar Center. Locked. Said close for the season. <laughs> Didn't have anyone in it. Now they got a ton. If, got a ton of guys. If Taylor goes over that five and a half number, that'd be the most since Lovett Purnell put up six in 95. Lovett Purnell reference. Love Lovett Purnell. So Taylor trying to get into Anthony Beck's category who went that had the five in 99. He also had four in 1998. Man, that's super hard. Some more context. Jack Telling from Oregon State and Jared Wiley from TCU led the NCAAs in tight end reception, touchdown receptions last season. They each had eight. There were only five college tight ends that had more than six receptions. There were seven that had exactly six. So what's that? You're talking about 12 dudes that had six or more touchdowns mm -hmm. from the tight end position. So that's elite company if Cole can get there. Five and a half touchdown catches for Taylor over or under? You are very mean. Very mean person, Hoppy. I'll go under for this for these reasons. One is it's it's a big number, you know, five and a half. So they got to get to six. The fact that Anthony Beck who played in the National Football League and was, I think, a first-round draft pick, the fact that Anthony Beck had six, what, five or six, in 1999, with Mark Bulger throwing to him, you know, that gives me pause. And you got other, you got other guys that can score touchdowns. I mean, Garrett Green can run it in. Uh, you got running backs that can run it in, or you can throw it to C.J. Donaldson. You got better receivers. So for those reasons, I'm going under five and a half. Yeah. Yep, dip, dip, dip. Boy, this is super. It's a good hard. number. That's good a number. great number. Yeah. It's a great number. 
four had four in his first season in the offense and Green's first season as a starter. Now they're now they're roommates, aren't they? Garrett and Cole roommates this year. That was gonna that is figuring to be a very heavy piece of my thought. Connection even stronger. Well, yeah, hey, dude, when we get down there, give me a little give me a little loving. But that's why they brought in Justin Robinson. That's why they brought in Jaden Bray. Once they get in, I mean, they have worked mm-hmm. tirelessly inside the red zone yes. this entire mm-hmm. yes. camp. They want to, They don't want field goals anymore. Touchdown percentage needs to they be. They want up, they touchdowns. Say. Uh-huh. Okay, stay on that. Stay on that line. We we talk about this all the time. What's the offensive line look like when it gets down tight? Does it have the ability to move people when they want to, or are you going to have to throw it a few more times down close? A six seven dude there in the back of the end zone, pretty good target. Oh, I've seen it. He gobbles pretty good it up. target. Like an octopus. It's only it two more touchdowns than he had last year. Wow. Again, my body and my soul within me tells me go under, go under, go under. However, you know, not everything that he scores as a touchdown has to be within the goal. I mean, well, that's it, also true. I mean, it could be a 37 yard down the seam. Sure. And he sure. runs right down the field. Solid and, point. Right. So it doesn't have to be that. I'm going over. <laughs> so you hell think, with it. You think I'm those just, safeties, hey. some are going to get sucked up because that running game's still going. Those safeties are coming up and just go right by them. I'm pushing my doggone chips in. I'm just going to say hell with it. I'm going over five and a half, even though it defies what I should be doing for the second I time. I see a trend. Yeah. Today'd be a good day to sell me a car. You got a fever. Yeah, I'll buy it. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's <laughs> fine. I'll, I'll take it. Be the most catches in 30 years. I understand. By a tight end. Which means a tight end's do. <laughs> Look at it the other way. What well, are you he doing? Was, he was such a weapon, and I do think it takes a step forward this year. I would like I would like to go with you again, just like you said, because I'm gonna I'm gonna say under. You guys with, trap me with the ultimate me with the ultimate tiebreaker. Just being, I, I think there is there's just more there's more options. I think there's more options. Five five would be a good number. Landing on five. I think he finds that his five, way. That hook that I threw in there, I think, changes that. The hook changes the, it. The, the yes. half kills me. The four, five, and, I would ha- a four and a half, four and I might have gone over. Yes, I'd have gone over on four and a half. Because I think five's totally reasonable. Now, I won't be shocked if it's six, but I'm going to, kind of like you said, I'll, I'll take the field as you probably should do in most over-unders. You should generally play more unders. Give me an under. Hey, yeah, fine. At least, at least this is what we know. When we tally these up, there are going to be winners and losers because mm-hmm. last year we were all together on a bunch of them. So this year we have uh, a diverse yes, no's over unders. So someone's, someone's going to get ridiculed. <laughs> Might be me. Um, I just, let's do it. Or you, maybe you can just spike the ball too. Maybe I sat with his dad at the scrimmage last Saturday. Yeah. So I just have a, just I'm with him. All right. The heart has its reason, the which heart, reason yeah. does not know. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. That was a good one too. Yeah, it was making these a little hard, dude. He's supposed to. I'll try and give you an easier one. Is this the last one? Yeah, last one. I, I got a, I got an addendum. Excuse me? I told Brad. You want to do it now or when I'm done with this one? When you're done. Okay. It's just a throw Here's away. a third one. I, I won't be as lengthy on this one because this is, this is really a, a number we don't talk about a lot, but we did last year, and this is defensive back pass breakups. Mm. Defensive back pass breakups. Uh, breakups PBUs we're going to use pro football focus numbers on this to stay consistent because there were there seemed to be quite a bit of variance between West Virginia stats pro football focus stats so we'll just we'll keep it consistent go what off of what pro football focus says okay Mm. okay and part of that's because I heard and I don't remember who it was Tony one of the coach interviews we had since camp open mentioned how Beanie had 10 pass breakups in his four years before arriving here and then jumped to 20 plus right so that's a different number than what Pro Football Focus had. That's why I said there's some variance, so stay with me on, on this. Pro Football Focus listed Beanie last year as West Virginia's leader with 14. To give some historical perspective to the leader for West Virginia, in 2022, it was Malachi Ruffin with four. 21, four, Daryl Porter. 2020, nine, Drayshawn Miller. 2019, 10, Hakeem Bailey. 2018, nine, Josh Norwood. You got to go back to 2016 to get another double digit number. That was 11 from Rasul Douglas, who played in the league. The year before that, 2015, another 11 is the team leader with Daryl Worley, a guy that played in the league. So let's talk past breakups this year. West Virginia's team leader, you don't have to identify who it will be. West Virginia's team leader will have 
at least, well, we'll, we'll have eight and a half pass breakups over or under. What eight did, and a half PBUs. What did Beanie have last year? Per pro football focus, 14. So you've gone, <coughs> excuse me, you've gone over this number one, two, three, four times in the last six seasons. Okay. So the number's eight and a half. Number's eight and a half. And, and I, you want to go? Mm-mm. All right. I'm going to go over. I'm going to go over because I think eight, eight, I think one, eight and a half is, re, is reachable. Number two is that I think this team's going to be pretty good, which means what, Brad? You might be ahead in some games. Maybe other teams got to throw the ball a little bit more if you get ahead in games. Maybe you have more opportunities for pass breakups. You got a lot of quarterbacks in this league throwing the ball around. So you might just have more chances. I'm going over at eight and a half. Go ahead, Brad. No, go ahead. No, you go. I want to hear your thoughts. I'd like to love to hear yours first. <laughs> Tony Spook now. He doesn't want to. Beanie had an unbelievable season. Yes. At 14. Had an unbelievable season. We've heard all off season and through camp, they feel like they got some some good corners here, in sp- specifically corners. Head coach told me today best corner since he's been here. Wow. Garnett Hollis has done it at this level on a really good defense. But will they throw at him enough? Last year, teams kept throwing at Beanie Bishop. All It didn't trail. Part of why he got to that ridiculous yeah. number, they just kept testing it. Why? They'd look at the film every week and say, oh, we're going to go at Beanie Bishop. Beanie Bishop said, come on, bring it on with you. I'm not going to let you in here. I'll just keep knocking him down. Let him right to a or consensus, all, off. Yeah, yeah, maybe, a consensus yeah. all-American season, right? Because they, yeah. they wouldn't stop. They kept going at him. You may run off the line, but you're going to limp back. <laughs> Do they throw at Garns and Hollis consistently enough? Do they spread that a little bit? You're going to get some teams that run, Hop. You're going to get some teams that run. What's Penn State going to do to you? They're going to run. They're going to throw it 45 times? Probably no, not. they're going to run. Pitt probably can't throw it 45 times. <laughs> Kansas? Well, they'll do a little both. Oklahoma State? They're going to run it and probably All not over. throw a lot of deep balls down there. Yeah. Rocco Beck will take some shots on you at Iowa State. Avery Johnson running ahead of passing maybe at this point. They're going to want to grind you on the ground. Four out of six years over? Over. Brad, go. One of under. you guys go. One of you guys go. Under. He just went. Brad went under. Okay. Under. Okay. Because I think it's spread a little bit. I don't think you'll. I don't think there'll be one guy that will get that many opportunities to get himself to nine. I'm going under simply because my heart keeps telling me under, and I went over twice. So I'm going to go <laughs> under. Finally, going to behave myself. I'm going to go under. Okay. There it is. Those are good. Well, there's our three. Over unders for part two. Somebody's got to keep. Somebody's keeping track, not us, of the Brad, series of, of who did what, so we can check. Right, that'll oh, be know, a fun number to watch this yeah. season too. You want to talk Garrett's big time throws? I, th- I think that number will be fun to watch because what I, what I tried to do in, in these is get areas of this team that we think are going to be really important to wins and losses. Okay, those defensive backs are a critical piece of this. Now, just because they go under a number of pass breakups doesn't mean they've had a tremendous season. In fact, no. it might indicate they've had a really good bad. season. Yeah, right. Well, Yes, or it could indicate that people are throwing it on you and <laughs> you get more chances. I mean, you just – you don't know. So, um, here's my – Oh, yeah, nugget. you got a, you got to do a diem? Oh, an okay. addendum. An, an addendum. Oh. Is that yes or no? Ooh. By December 1st, a credible sports journalism entity – I'm Pete, talking like Pete CBS. Thamel. It, Pete Thamel. Pete <laughs> Thamel. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. What's Pete saying? <laughs> Pete Thamel will report. There will, there will be a story about a coaching search, and Neil Brown will be mentioned as a possible candidate. I'm not saying he will be, but I'm saying that he will be mentioned as a candidate in a coaching search story by December 1st. Yes or no? Say that again. That in a, in a credible – I'm not talking about a blog. I'm talking about Pete Thamel or ESPN or CBS Sports or The Athletic, that by December 1st, there will be a story about a coaching search because of a vacancy, because now we fire people all year long. There will be a coaching search, and that story will mention Neil Brown as a possible candidate. I'm not saying he is or will be, but his name will be mentioned in the story, yes or no. He, by the way, he, he, he described that question and gave it like Coach Bowden. 
Right, he gave like he came back around the second time. Now, what I'm saying is, <laughs> now by December first, he will be mentioned by a credible source. Now that means, <laughs> uh, well, I I tend to be bullish on this team and think they're going to have a good year. Now, h- how do we define that? What's that mean? That remains to be seen. We'll keep talking about. It. I I think they go over their six and a half wins. I think they're in the mix. They're certainly in a bowl. I think they're going to be in the mix as they get down this season. Which, if you've done that and in back-to-back seasons, and I, th- I think the I think the answer is yes on the that. Answer is yes. Yeah, okay. I think I think that's yes because, and also part of this is, it doesn't mean Neil Brown has interest in Not another job. No. It simply means the people putting those lists together aren't a lot of times even being given candidates from an uh, from a school. They're putting together people that have had good years at right. schools they think might. So yeah, right. I think I think that can happen. Uh, to me, all that takes is West Virginia having another good season, and he's going to be on a list. That's it. Yeah. So, so yes. you're a yes. Tony? I'm a yes. You're a yes? Yeah. yeah I'm, 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 a, I'm a yes, too. All three yeses on that. That wasn't a very good question. Over-under brought to us by. <laughs> Make it by November 22nd. Maybe Conley maybe CPA Group providing value beyond numbers. Conley CPA Group. Well, that would be interesting if you had changed the date because then it's going to be referenced. Th- then, then I may say no because it's going to be – Less schools that have an opening, right, yes. less likely. Yeah, smaller window, yeah, yeah smaller yeah. window to fit in. But I still think if he's if if this program's having a good year, he's going to get mentioned. That's just the world you live in is either this: you're either going to be fired and you're on the hot seat, or you're mentioned for a, another <laughs> job. There there is no in between. There is no that hey, you're really building, you're doing a nice job, you got the program in the right direction. There are there is none of that. There's no room for nuance in coaches. There, it's either you're out and he's getting fired, or you're going on to another place. That's it. There's there, the only there, two options. There might be a story the first week in September says that when coaches do get fired, <laughs> here oh, are yeah. some of the names. Yeah. They're all over that. You know, Tudors sells more than biscuits. Excuse me? Tudors. They sell more than biscuits. They do. Yeah, they now have the new grilled chicken wrap. Ooh. That comes along with three mouth-watering sauces featured right there. Grilled chicken wrap, bold barbecue, filled juicy chicken, Colby jack cheese, crisp lettuce, big enough to satisfy any appetite. Don't miss this delicious summer <laughs> treat. Visit Tudors today to get yours. Chicken wrap. You guys ready? Um, so once again, let me give you the um, the preamble to the Constitution on uh, textual healing. Yep. We, we were so backloaded that not everyone that's sent is going to hear their deal. So we did our best to uh, get as many in as possible, and uh, we'll do better going forward because this becomes a regular segment again now that we've got out of our interview series. I got an interviewee that I'm going to try to schedule. I'm not telling you who it is. Excuse me? But if I get him, it's going to be, it'll be, it'll be giddy. It'll be giddy time. Former Mountaineer. No, nothing to do with the Mountaineers. What? Nothing to do with the Mountaineers. Profession? That's all I'll say for now. Thank you, Your Honor. Three guys before the game. Textual healing is brought to us by episode800.com. You can see the senator right there wearing the efforting shirt. There it is. And um, that, by the way, I don't know if the if the uh, camera you? does it justice, but that is that is stitched in there. That's just not a that's not a screen. That's a stitch on that thing. Did you buy right? that? I need one of those. Well, yeah, I bought it. We'll yeah. get you. Yeah, we, we'll get you that. Right. Uh, take a look. Episode eight hundred dot com. We got all of our we items have a gear there. Gear closet sitting back there. We're gonna buy our own stuff. We need to work on that. Work need on that. A, need a comp. <laughs> we'll get you some. We'll get you some. To take care of Poppy. Uh, but yeah, anyway, we well, got a nice comp shirt on right there. I do. Fine it's looking. Peter Phil Daniels. Millar. Yeah, provided Very that. Very nice. Nice three G. By Sorry, the way, go ahead there. We, we were over there at uh, we were over there at Fine Looking Phil's this week, and he had just come back. Remember, I told you he went yeah, to Peter Millar yeah, this week. Yeah. He said the CEO of Peter Millar was waiting for him when he walked in. Really? Yeah. To thank him for the unbelievable job that he's doing with their product. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So I didn't ask Phil. I don't know if the CEO of Peter Millar mentioned three guys or he didn't. I, I believe. To, if I'm I think not he mis- did. If I'm not mistaken, yeah. I think he said. By the way, how's Hoppy, Brad, and Tony? <laughs> I think that's what he said. Peter Millar, three guys gear looks great. Did he say that? I think so. Yeah. I'll confirm that. Uh, how about this West Virginia connection mm-hmm. alert? How about this West Virginia connection? Yeah. I met someone from Morgantown with the flying WV hat on. He was at the Taco Bell 
at the Pierpont exit here in Morgantown. He said, we're everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a chortle. Yeah. Here's is. another one. There's always a West Virginia connection. Look at that. Chef Boy RD. What now? Huh? Yeah. What? Chef Boy RD is a former chef at the Greenbrier. Really? A thousand years ago. And that was uh, that was the guy. That was the image that they used, Chef Boy RD. Did not know that. Mm -hmm. Pretty amazing. First you've heard of it? Yeah, pretty yeah. amazing. So uh, shout out Chef Boy RD. How'd that come back on? <laughs> Who was that from? Bob and Culloden? Yeah, Bob and Culloden. I mean, Culloden's nice, I'm nice cross, this time. I'm cross reference though. It's fine. Chef, Take a spell, look. I spell Boy RD on there. It is. <laughs> uh, B O Y R D. Boy R D. However. Okay. Where's that music coming from? I love it, but like I can't stop it. All right, here we go. Scope Senator Dean, excited for the uh, eighth season. Wow, what can be said about Lou Wendell Marine? From the mighty Kanawha River to James Bond movies to providing the pontoons for the Olympic opening ceremony in Paris. Look at that. There they go. There's Lou, <laughs> Lou Wendell at the opening ceremonies of the Olympic Games. With a lot of talk about the portion of athletic departments, we hear about the 20%. If Texas budget is two hundred million, is it correct to assume that they can distribute forty million dollars? The answer is yes. It's twenty percent. So yeah, that will. If you got the big, big revenue, big budget, you will have more to share. But the percentage is you have to give that part of it. Trave Ragazzi, hello from Italy, currently touring around the country: Rome, Florence, Palermo, Sorrento. Tony, it was great to see you at the wheeling stop of the coach's caravan. And uh, wheeling, I caught up with co coaches Kellogg's and DeVries. We talked about our upcoming trips to uh, Italy. Speaking of Italian league, great hearing from Nate Adrian. Fun fact, we played high school basketball against each other. I'm a year older. I went to Brooke. My claim to fame is I took a charge from Nathan during my senior year. <laughs> there you go. Thanks to all the great summer interviews. They gave me a taste of home. There he is, Ryan. From Chandler, Arizona, by the way, of Weirton. Right there, Hoppy. You ever been there? Go Where? back there. Ponte Vecchio. Didn't I shop yes. at the picture? Yes. Look, didn't been. I shop at the picture there? Put himself off to the side. Got the shot of the so if water you go right back, there. If you go back to the structure that spans across the bridge there, the water, the bridge, that is uh, some of the great, great jewelry items. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. You walk in there. It's just all jewelry. That's, uh, I think, Oliver Straw's dad's ever visited there to... Oh, absolutely. Do some work with the diamonds. I love Florence. I got engaged in Florence. Excuse me? Huh? Well, well, let me rephrase that. The question was asked. There was some delay as to whether or not <laughs> on the actual commitment, but it started in Florence. She got, she got, oh, ba yeah. she got back to him in Rome. <laughs> began so, the discussion in Florence? Yeah, the discussion began. Efforting began in uh, <laughs> Tony, uh, at Tori Bori, Boriardi. Ettore, B-O-I-A-R-D-I, -I, yeah. was, right. was born in Borgonova, Val Tadone, Italy, near P-I-A-C-E-N-Z-A. Pienza? Pienza. Yeah. In 1897, he came to Ellis Island when he was 16. So is there any truth to that he was at the Greenbrier? That's, I'm still efforting on that. But or someone just That's as far as I've gotten to okay. Ellis Island. Hey, three guys, I was going to let this slide. I'm pretty sure that I was just discriminated against by the stupid podcast. <laughs> You're got, you guys are pulling out a call for contributions from students to help them get some experience. They're the future, right? They aren't. Robots are the future. But what if you're not a student and you want to contribute? What if I want to be official three guys pod historian? What if I documented that in the last show at minute 39? Tony says, you should see me froth milk. And then in minute 59, Tony says to Brad, do you use beard oil? Then two minutes later, complete shock and awe by both Tony and Brad at the length of the episode. I know, fellas. I'm not sure how that episode ended up being so long either. I love the show. <laughs> Pete and Pensboro. Hector Boyardee had little trouble finding work when he arrived in the U.S. He joined the culinary staff at the Plaza Hotel in New York. Um, and then he earned work at the Greenbrier Hotel in West Virginia, where he oversaw catering for the wedding reception of President Woodrow Wilson. How which, is what, which is what Bob said in his tweet there. He said yeah. Boyardee was here reception. in West Virginia. Of course yeah. he was. Well, that's a stunner. Yeah. Awesome. Here's one for you, and this is the future of college sports. And so it begins, says the texter. That's Pitbull. And he has bought the name of mm -hmm. the football stadium at Florida International University. It will now be Pitbull Stadium. And the point is that...
that's where we're going with this stuff. People looking for revenue. People looking for revenue, and it's going to be Pitbull Stadium. Great up, move by him. Up next, Charles Wesley Godwin Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Wesley Godwin Big 12. <laughs> <laughs> CWG better. Big 12. That's even better. Chuck owns the league. No, that's great. <laughs> Texter. Man, Tony, I had a Romney peach on Wednesday, and I tell you, I haven't stopped thinking about it since. All this Tudor's talk is driving me up the wall. Kaiser needs a Tudor's biscuit world. Thanks for all you guys do. Nice to see all three of you together. Can't wait for football. Signed by Grayson, not a Kaiser. You think did they you, put did a, you Did you finish off that? Would you have a peck of peaches from Romney? Long ass gone. Oh. I'm looking for another peck in Those case anyone's good. got a pick of peaches. I'd love to have a pick like of peaches. like to pick a peck of pickled yeah. peppers? I did get a slice of one of those. Did you? Was good. Out of his pack, oh, I got a slice. a slice. I said a slice out of it. Oh, nice and juicy. It was very good. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Old Romney brought some good peaches up here. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how good homegrown tomatoes are? Oh, my gosh. Like right now, I, had I got some last night. Like I just just like, a different, it's a different where do you get? I need. To, where do you get them? Guy that's doing work at our house. He's got a garden. He says, you need tomatoes? And the lady behind our house as well. Really? Beth. Beth has been supplying as well. Grab me a couple. Yeah, bring in a couple extra because we're about to run out. I bought some last night. I mean, just. Where'd you get yours? Family right. member. They're like candy. They're fruits. You know tomatoes are fruit. Yeah. They're, it's just like, why? It used to be, it used to be somebody would just leave them in a brown paper bag on your doorstep. <laughs> You know, back somebody in the day. like back in the day. Oh, I, the tomatoes came in. I got six six bushels, so here's a bag full. Yeah, I've been crushing them. Texter, thank you so much for having Rev Kev's barbecue on three guys. I've always heard that something special was going on with Rev Kev. Now that he has been on your show, we know that the special is off the charts. Your show is a blessing, also. That's a new one for us. Our show is a blessing. I'll say. Study you guys suck. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, three guys, great show today. I'd be interested in making a donation to Rev Kev's food program. Can you put me in touch with him? Thank you. There you go. If you'd like to get a, uh, involved with that, the website is thesourcewv.org. Thesourcewv.org. By the way, that big trailer made it to more West Virginia. Did it? Yeah, big old trailer. I mean, that's the longest doggone trailer I've that ever seen. That thing is gigantic. <laughs> I mean, that, that truck that they hauled it with was like it, the first time I ever heard a truck cry. Ah! <laughs> it was big. Trailer that's a big, big trailer. That's I guess amazing. they're doing brisket in there this right right now. They're doing it a they're test. Getting a test test kitchen. They're doing a test right now. They're can firing we, a can thing. Can we get over there and get oh, some of the test? Drive kitchen? over to Westover. We'll make our way there. And he thinks he's going to park that thing next to Daniel's. <laughs> well, I mean, what are we? What are, we're working we'll, that out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Have to. All yeah, right, we'll figure it out. That thing's That's so big. Close off University Avenue. Might have to close off the blue lot and just put it in there. It's so big. <laughs> that thing is so big. <laughs> they got to get the guy from Hartfield over at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is giant. <laughs> You could live in there. Look nice. Texter said, went to episode800.com. I'm looking around at your merchandise. It dawned on me, if all the items you guys had on there, there's still something missing. Koozies. We don't have any koozies. Hmm. Well, we'll get we'll get Dave on that. Isn't our, isn't our stuff a little bit more, no offense to koozies, all due respect to koozies, <laughs> a little bit more high-end than koozies? Uh, quick on there. Ah. want to buy a three guys koozie, we'll, we'll put you're it right on, on there. You're on that? Sure. That's we make them in teak wood, something like that. Get to home with Dave on that. Yeah. Efforting. Tony, Gary, and Beckley, thanks to three guys for introducing me to Charles Wesley Godwin. We finally got to see him live at the State Fair, and he was as good as advertised. Kudos to three guys for always supporting excellence in all things Mountaineer and in koozies. Um, goodness gracious, God almighty, how long is this? I'm not reading this. It's a full page. Andy from Parkersburg, too long. Oh, man. I'll just give you his clothes. Just read the part. I'll just give you his clothes. Give the clothes. The football staff really appears to be living off the disrespect mantra of last year that was so effective, and now this year it's being overlooked. Yet again, it feels like the difference being this year, I see Coach knows that his job is safe. He knows he's got a real contender in the locker room. Not sure if you guys see the same attitude change or if it's just me. As always, love the show, and let's go, Mountaineers. What he said basically was he could just tell that um, Neil is confident in his press conferences and bouncy. Charlie from Midlothian writes, Tony, I think I achieved a first on your Monday podcast. On two different occasions, sandwich, sandwiched around your eye surgery discussion, you started with Charlie from Midlothian, but never said anything after getting sidetracked. Imagine that. Shock. Probably the ouch text where Kroger came in way ahead of our fuel purchase that day. I thought about texting because I'd noticed 
<laughs> that your eyes looking very different and hope nothing serious was going on. Glad that it was elective. Ten years younger. You look ten years younger from that uh, plastic surgery. Let me just tell you about how crazy that is. I've had two people contact me now since we talked about that. Yeah. Wanting to know because they got to get it done themselves. Their oh, doctors really? also did not. So I'm just right now I'm recommending doctors. Really? <laughs> so I'm selling. <laughs> well, go back to your doctor. Should be a sponsor of the podcast. Yeah, he's really? a good guy. I saw him yesterday. Turned um, into an eye influencer. Yeah, and so basically, <laughs> we're selling Funyuns, Reese cups, gas, and eye procedures. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tony Caridi. See, I don't know if what, you need an eye procedure. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about eye surgery. We can recommend that. You don't think we do koozies? You don't think those are in the same category? Yeah, d- different ends of the counter. Uh. Texter says, I think Reed Carrico. Would you, would will you buy a sp- koozie from somebody who's also doing eye surgery? <laughs> or vice versa, I guess. Would you get eye surgery from somebody selling you a koozie? <laughs> <laughs> buy a koozie and get eye surgery or get eye surgery and get a free koozie my doctor said to me when i saw him yesterday did you go to paris for the olympics uh, no <laughs> football football <laughs> tony i'm with you on officials wearing shorts it doesn't affect the calls but it doesn't look like football my crew my crew regardless of the level of game always wears the full uniform by the way i'm in on monroe county right now my family grew up there I fished Moncov, Moncov Lake today. Over under. Will Hoppy make five shows in a row? Oh, good number. Should have made it five and a half. Yeah. Yes, it is. Love the show. Yes. Fred. Fred runs in. Thank you. Yes. You, you go over on I, five I and a half? I would have gone over. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Tony, are the lights at the stadium that much better, or is it because you had your eyelids lifted? <laughs> <laughs> good, great question. That's a good one. I can see. Is Tell that the 50? Well done. Tell Coach Scott and Coach Brown to bring back the Statue of Liberty. I didn't know they stole it. (laughs) (laughs) Same guys that pulled off that Jackie Robinson heist. (laughs) Hey, three guys, previous episode, Brad said that someone tallied the 2023 over-unders. I don't remember ever hearing them, so I went back and I listened to those two episodes again. I think I calculated the results. <laughs> There's no suspense in the outcome, though, because you jack wagons all made the same picks <laughs> for every category. There it is. Look, he went back for every category. Well, at least Brad and Tony did. Hoppy was MIA for the second episode of Over Unders. <laughs> I recently got dumped by my girlfriend, so I should have plenty oh. of time to keep up this coming season on the Over Unders if you would like. I can send a progress report after every third game regarding how each one is trendy. I love the show, and no offense, Matt, in referring to you all as jack wagons. Uh, send an sorry, over-under. sorry about the, the relationship status. Yeah, send an over-under on your dating. Then he came back and said, correction, Brad and Tony got five out of the six. The Cole Taylor TD category was marked wrong. That's what I get for trying to cook and calculate results at the same time. I guess I'm a jack wagon, too. <laughs> JD, two things. One, sorry about the girlfriend situation, but uh, if it wasn't meant to be, yep. it wasn't meant to be. However, we will accept your offer of updating us on the uh, over-unders as the season goes on. Texter says, hey, guys, Brian from Cole William. Taylor touchdowns back-to-back years. Say, say, what's that now? We did Cole Taylor touchdowns back-to-back years. What was it last year? Do you remember? It, the number was down. It was No, I don't. We, I couldn't see that sheet. There's probably one and a half or two and a half. It's probably down in that, okay. All right. that number. Brian in Williamstown. These Romney peaches are taking over. The day I listened to you guys talking about them, we have a truck in Williamstown of all places selling Romney peaches right off the highway. Of course they do. I'd love to know what the connection is the next time that they're here as to why they make the trip all the way across the state to sell those bad boys. They also sell them across the river in Ohio and Marietta. I bought some from Witten's, and I'm waiting for them to ripen, so I hope they're as good as advertised. One important thing, I haven't been this excited for Mountaineer football in years. I finally... Got season tickets for the first time. I'm bringing my dad with me to the Penn State game. We're making the trip up from Knoxville. Last West Virginia game he attended, 88 Penn State. Wow, yeah, that's bring a Bring in the good luck, Joe. Yeah. I hope to see you all. Hope to have a, see you at the tailgate. Yeah, we'll be there. Texter, I had a, hope you guys all had a great summer. With Tudors now being a sponsor, I figured I would enlighten you all and the listeners. Here is my off-the-menu. Oh. This is what he orders when he goes oh, through. Te- okay. All right. Ready? Yep. Yes. Yes, can I help you? Yeah. I want a fried chicken biscuit, yeah. add hash browns, add melted cheese, uh-huh. add bacon, uh-huh. add a fried egg. You pair that I with a that. Sunday afternoon nap. <laughs> <laughs> Obligatory legal disclaimer, probably best to avoid operating heavy machinery after consuming that. Cheers, boys. Thanks for all you do. Sincerely, Connor, Charlotte. Sounds good. I like that one. It's a good one. Yeah, that nap fits right in there, too. Um. 
Doug in Bridgeport, not that I need credit, but I was the one Brad referred to as doing the over-under recap at the end of the season. This year's first over-under number of carries has easily 20 variables that could affect the number. I may take the time to list them. <laughs> nah, not really. Not interested. Brad, did you get preseason more likely I sent you last week? There may be some fodder in there to fit into your over-under scheme. I sent it in Messenger. If you would prefer, I'll text it. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's Doug into Bridgeport? Yeah, Doug, text it to the text line if you would. Thank you. So now people are helping you out on these things. Well, more likely something we do in during sports line. Yeah. Oh, it's usually okay. a Thursday sports line show. Which of these two things is more likely to happen during the game? Oh. Kind of a fun exercise. Yeah, that's off. good. A little twist on the over under. Yes, that's good. Different way to approach the mm -hmm. game analysis. Mm -hmm. More likely, Doug and Bridgeport contributes occasionally. He does a good job with them. That's good. Oh, this is wild. Look at this, dude. Brad, what? look at this. What? Look. Watch this. What do you someone, just go away? Someone just took the someone took the computer over. They know we're recording. I don't Can know. We have it back. Doing. Obviously, they don't. I'll show them a thing or two. Hey, here's another Mountaineer connection for you. I was born and raised in Spencer. Went to Spencer High School. Go Yellow Jackets. I live in North Carolina. Last month, I ran my 13th full marathon Jeez. in my 13th state. Awesome. This one was in Missoula, Montana. Hello! <laughs> we haven't done that in a while. I always proudly wear my tattered, well-worn West Virginia running hat at every marathon. Mesa, Duluth, Big Sur, New York City, to name a few. Every single race, no matter where I go, it always gets a let's go Mountaineers from the spectators. After last month's Montana Marathon, the wife and I went to Yellowstone, met dozens of fellow Mountaineers all over the park. It's true, we are everywhere. I plan to continue to run marathons as long as my now 63-year-old body allows me. And my West Virginia hat, there he is. Awesome. We'll That's always impressive. be a part of it. That's Love really three impressive. guys, always listen. Jim and Gastonia. North Carolina, forever a Mountaineer. Great job, Jim. Outstanding. Hoppy, 63 years old. My boy's running That's marathons. Awesome. Yeah, that is. Hashtag, that's a, hashtag connection 304. There's always one. Yeah, impressive. Texter, when I met Mary Roush, the former Mountaineer, a couple of years ago, when she was the mascot, she told me that she had 400 to 500 events planned, and it wasn't uncommon to do three or four events a day as the Mountaineer. I saw Braden's last Instagram post, and apparently he went on a bus to all 17 Jefferson County schools on the same day. My goodness. That's, that's unbelievable. That's, yeah. Compared to Notre Dame, they've got four leprechauns. Do they really? Apparently. Each year, the Mountaineer really gets out there and does. That's why it's such a prestigious position. Joe and Charles. Amen, Joe. Hard gig. Yes, it is. Hard gig. All right, let me get this one. Let me read this quick. I travel internationally. I go from Brazil to England, Norway to Australia. Everyone knows country roads. One of the most memorable occurred in Japan. One day, a guy took me out to a karaoke bar. Inevitably, it came to my turn. My host introduced me and told him I was from South Carolina. What? I asked him to tell the crowd that while I live in South Carolina, I'm really from West Virginia, to which I heard several people say, country roads. Mm-hmm. Of course, that was the song I had chosen. I asked my host to explain to the crowd that this was an important song, West Virginia's anthem, and that we should all stand, turn to the east, and put our hand over our hearts. <laughs> After explaining this to the crowd, my host turned to what he thought was the east and put his hand over his heart, and as I watched the crowd, they got out of their chairs, they turned in the same direction, they put their hands over their heart, and the full bar of non-English speaking Japanese, we belt out country roads. It's a memory I'll never forget. Paul from Fincastle. Well played. Very good. Here, I bet you this is Matt, who was working on a computer. Have good, you? Good have you hey, Matt, what's up? Oh, we're just going to be taking calls. Uh, listen, are you messing around with the so computer? This isn't a soccer coach hire, is it? No, I don't know what. He's just, yeah. Hey, listen, we're recording three guys right now, and you're now <laughs> part of the show. So thanks, Matt. See you, buddy. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah. That was Matt over at the other building. Did I'll you? take his call because normally he's the only human being over there that'll do anything. Oh, that's a good you. point. He does answer the call, so you always yeah. take it. Yeah. There's a uh, new song out. Jelly Roll has a new song that samples the country roads music, different words. Really? Yeah. You know, I'm a big music guy. Huge. You went out to a concert this summer out there in Colorado. I did. That's true. I did. That, you've come around then because you were an, you were a non music guy hated music. last year. Big music guy. He suck. He he sucks up to Charles. I mean, he, oh, is that what it is? He he says, hey. He came over and said, hey, Charles. Listen, I know you write every day. Here's a little something that I've put together. Some lyrics. <laughs> 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 what I'm trying to do here is 
Hello, two and a half guys. What happened? My music listening. Wait, don't start. Don't come in late on the music thing and act like you're a music guy. You're late on that. That's okay. I'm glad you are, but it's new. Well, don't patronize. Don't try and attack me and then try and walk it back right there. <laughs> And I don't need your approval whether I like music or not. It makes no difference to me what you think what you about listen- my music what you, consumption. What are you listening to? Next text. Not not discussing music with you if you're going to be like that. <laughs> don't need to discuss it with you. He's really bring, bringing the Barney songs. Hello, two and a half guys. What happened to stop into the naked pig for some mac and cheese to prepare for Kev's barbecue at the food court and discuss plans? Turns out what happened is we run into a homeless guy named Dave. He's the best homeless guy we've had the pleasure to meet <laughs> with new, in New York City. Homeless Dave. Well, there they are. There's Homeless Dave oh. with Brandon and jo- uh Why do I always say your name wrong? Yeah, Jolie. Jolie. Did the, long, the O's long? Yeah, Jolie. I'm sorry, Jolie. I keep butchering your name. I know who you are. Brandon and Jolie. She's a traveling nurse. Oh. oh. And we've, we've met, met, we've met, met them at the food court. They, yeah, they food did a, court. Yeah, because they were in town last year. Yeah, yeah. yeah they were working exactly. here. So. Yeah, and they, they, ran, how the they, they, they ran into great. Homeless Dave? Yeah, he was in the city. He was at work. He was at. He was in New York. Where, usually, he's someplace. Well, he, that's where he lives there too. He lives here. Well, he, doesn't, he, lives, he doesn't, doesn't live anywhere, but he's got a house there. He's got a place. In well, New he York. says. Have you ever been there? No. <laughs> hey, Tony, <laughs> your buddy Mothman is running for political office. His campaign poster is up in Jared'stown for the November election. <laughs> 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 Stupid moth man. <laughs> Red eyes, big key. Uh what is this? This looks like the twenty variables from Doug in Bridgeport that he referenced would affect the over under rushing number. Yeah, I'm not reading that. <laughs> but Brad, you can just take that and use that for your information. Wow, there's a lot there. There's twenty one reasons why. Yeah. What's Doug do? Brad? See, Contr- how, contributes have, to the show. How's he have time for this? Pretty good. Yeah, we talked about a bunch of these. But should we hire him? Should we hire? I mean, is this guy? This is this an apply? Is this he applying for a job? No, then you have to pay him. Now it's just free. Yeah. God Three forbid, guys. God forbid anybody get paid on this. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, nobody make any money. Nah. Hey, That's Doug, all. we're going to bring you in. You're going to make the same amount that we all make. How's <laughs> zero? Pretty good. Good. Thank you. He had a question in there, uh, number eighteen. About Tavon, he's referencing, referencing Tavon Austin. Of course, Tavon just retired. Yeah. He had, uh, what do you have, nine years? Yeah, Hunter brought up, yeah. he has the most a... receiving yards of any former Mountaineer in NFL history. Really? Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's a good run, nine years. Oh, it's a great run. Absolutely. It's he, a great run. We we said on the show the other night, the hop, just wish he would have been at a place yeah. at a time that could have used him yes. properly to showcase those skills. Because he, he had some amazing oh, highlights. Oh, my gosh. He, Pat, I was watching Pat the other day, McAfee, and he was talking about, I, I, I had missed this, that one of Tavon's punt returns for touchdowns in the NFL came off a McAfee punt, and it was a 99-yard return. Really? Yeah, and Pat was funny. I mean, he, Pat was a great punt. He boomed it and pinned it right in the corner. You couldn't have placed it any better. Tavon goes over, and he's waving off everybody. Get away, get away. And then he, he grabs it. it at the one oh, and no. had about four inches of space up the sideline to work and takes it all the way to the house. Was he a treat or what? Yeah, you was, remember, God, it was fun to watch. You remember the one that he and Stedman Bailey had where they both came back down and they faked it? Yeah. And yes. they were pretending that was it was coming one. to this yeah. side and it went to the other side? That was awesome. Yeah, he, he's one of those. We said this on the show. You're While you're watching him, you know how great it is, yeah. but you're still not appreciating how great it is. And then we mentioned, is, does he go down as the best recruiter for WVU football over the last 15 years? Yes. How many people have we mentioned, current players, and still recruits to this day? Well, when did you first hear about well, oh, Tavon Austin highlight film? No, he and Pat. Seriously. Yeah, but, now, but now you've moved on to the, the yeah, Tavon, yeah. right? I mean, we still remember the Pat, but the Tavon yeah, well, is still, yeah, true. Right? Yeah. still going on. Three guys, I was in the Seattle airport three minutes when I met a WVU graduate. <laughs> While hiking on Mount Rainier, 5,800 feet, I met Lee from Harper's Ferry. There he is. Signed by Dr. Jeff in Charleston. So there you go. I don't know which one's Dr. Jeff. Dr. Jeff is a, has become a regular through the years. I Which one? Is, is, it, is it the hiker or is it the guy in the gold shirt? Hiker and guy in gold shirt. That's just me sending Austin a note to get the right picture. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was it. <laughs> That's me. Anyway. 
Dear three guys, Professor Vinny, this is a call out to P1 listeners to share your over-unders and prop bets, basically much like you guys do with football, for the number of sacks or rushing yards. I'm, list, I'm asking listeners to do their over-and-unders for how many times Tony mentions Reese Cups or how many times Hoppy misses a podcast or how many times Brad name drops Iowa or which profession the guys will insult next. Yeah, we could do that. We could do that. Um, so there you go. By the way, I'm trying to find out where this, where this one starts. Da, 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 da. Brad, Tony, Hoppy. Here's an always West Virginia connection, and it's not the good kind. Uh-oh. I just flown from Pittsburgh to Denver to Honolulu to Kauai. Long day, super happy to finally arrive. I was sporting a West Virginia hat with a great big flying WV. From a distance across the uh, facility bar, wherever he was, hey, WVU! I turn, look across a large cafe, expecting to see another WVU fan. Instead, I see a guy wearing a University of Florida polo. Mm. He condescendingly continued and said, Hey, I remember WVU, 93 Sugar Bowl. Yeah. I gave him the bird and continued on my vacation in paradise. Well done. This one still bugs me, though. Not all always a West Virginia connection stories <laughs> end happily. <laughs> Todd from the Charleston Starbucks. Oh, sure. It's your buddy down there, Charleston yeah. Todd. Well, he, I mean, he went, well, here, here's how you redeem. So, Todd, you just need to make sure next time you see a Clemson fan out, just go ahead and pay that forward from the Florida guy. Hey, Clemson, remember we hung 70 on you. <laughs> hung 70. <laughs> Game hung 70. <laughs> there's, you got to be careful about those kind of things, though, because there's – it goes around, comes around. That 93 game, that was a that was a major disappointment. It was a bad game. Yeah. It kind of sticks in my crawl. Yeah, we went down there and scored, and then Steve Perkins committed the personal foul, pissed him off. Eric Rett went down the field, 272 yards, ran, made it all the way to the French Quarter by the time they <laughs> slowed him down. Yeah. Not a good day to be a Mountaineer wherever you may be. Hey, the Mountaineer Man Trip is presented by GoMart. It's your chance to experience game day like never before. This exclusive pregame tradition starts two hours, 20 minutes before the kick. You get a front row seat to Mountaineer Spirit. GoMart's giving you the chance to win your spot to be part of the Mountaineer man trip. You get to take the field with the Mountaineers, but you'll also receive game day tickets, limited edition GoMart WV apparel. You got to enter, though, and this stops on the 23rd of August as far as applications. Download the GoMart app or go to GoMart.com and try to win a spot in this year's Mountaineer Man Trip. Hey, guys. Last text. My little girl wanted me to show off her Neil Brown, Garrett Green, Nico Marchiol autographed sock monkey from <laughs> Fan Day. Is this a one-of-one one item? It has to be. Look at that little cute. That's cutie. awesome. Looking forward to the food court, 30 August, followed by a huge win the next day. Let's go, Mountaineers. Joey B. in Athens, West Virginia. We talk about a product that stood the test of time. Those sock monkeys have been around a long, long time. Yeah. My sister used to carry one everywhere. Did she really? Uh-huh. Wow. Isn't it interesting how kids, they grab a hold of something, man, yeah. and they just like, that becomes their thing. Yeah. Sock monkey. Big. What was yours, Tony? Teddy Bear. Yeah. Named Teddy. Very creative back in the day. You know, I did the same thing. A teddy bear named Teddy. No imagination. My little guy. None. My little guy. Zero. My little guy, Luca, for no reason whatsoever. He has like this teeny little like, um, it's a mini little blanket. Black and white. Checked. And he calls it apple pie. <laughs> and they got no reason to know why he started calling it apple pie. But like apple pie goes to bed with him. And he carries apple pie whenever he needs to get that. Gets that comfort. Like, where's apple pie? Bring apple pie. Now, that's some creativity and imagination. That is. What about yeah. you, Bear? What about your kids, Brad? What they have? Sock monkeys? No. we. I think we had a sock monkey, but it didn't become a. <laughs> didn't become an item. You guys are huge in Christmas season with the uh, the Santa that high. Like, the what's the thing that you do with the, if you don't behave, then you're not going to get any presents. What's that thing? Where's Santa? There's a little thing you put. Oh, Elf on the Shelf? Elf on the Shelf. Yeah, Elf on the Shelf was a big deal. Yeah, that, that's like you, yeah. you You used to ride roughshod on that. Yeah. <laughs> you just baited your kids so that like, oh, really? That's true. 
Oh, is that, oh, is that right? Is that right, Gigi? Is that right, Gigi? Uh, Gigi, uh, I don't know. Elf on the Shelf's looking. Might not get a present for 10 years. You, you're banging pretty hard on that do one. You remember, um, do you remember Matt Moeller who played at Morgantown High? Yeah. Yeah, Matt Moeller. He had, and I knew him when he was just a little kid, and he had a blanket like a lot of kids, like had his banky, you know, and he would not part with it. And it had to be washed and used again, washed, used again. It ended up being about <laughs> just this little square. Bit, just like a little square. Still wouldn't part with it, like kind of hang on to it. Guys, I think we've done enough damage. Uh, I'll say. Don't you think we have? I think we've done enough damage. So this, uh, I feel good. I mean, we've done two shows this week. I mean, we still feel pretty bouncy, pretty fresh. Uh, we're going to go to recovery take, now. Take like tomorrow just, off. Just like the team going to we can get, some, get some stuff going on there. Uh, Mountaineers close the week with a scrimmage, closed scrimmage, on Saturday afternoon. And then school starts next Wednesday, and it's rug cutting time. Yeah, so really just one more week of camp before it turns over into Penn State week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we oh, opponent boy. prep here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Getting so, there. So we got to start. Have you started Penn State, Brad? Sniffing. Me? Yeah. Sniffing. Me. Yeah, you have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got to get busy. Drew Aller. Drew Aller's back. They got 13 guys. That were Big Ten All Conference selections returning. Got both those running backs back again. Yeah, we'll talk some. They get two new coordinators. Yeah, they do some really good offseason hire. That offensive coordinator coming in from Kansas uh, going to be something we have to talk about. Yeah, got to play football. Got to play football. He's pretty creative with that offense at KU. Mm-hmm. Yeah, got to play football. Three guys before the game brought to us by Comax Business Systems, keeping West Virginia's business data safe, secure, and efficient for 25 years. By GoMart. Get a GoMart rewards card. Go to GoMart.com for details. By Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans. They sell family fun. Visit LouWendellMarineSales.com. By Tudor's Biscuit World. Start your day the homemade way. And by Conley CPA Group. Providing value beyond the numbers. I'm on a roll. And by the Spiegel Catalog. Over 60,000 quality items chosen just for you. The Spiegel Catalog. Old school there. And by Turtle Wax for that hard shell finish. It's Turtle Wax. (laughs) By the way, quick note. If you have the GoMart app, you know this already. We'll deal on Slim Jims. What do they got on Slim Jims? Two for six. What does that mean? Two for six. You get two for six bucks. Is that in the How long are they? Fly Rod Slim Jims? Go in and check it out. All right, there you heard it first. They're selling 12-foot Slim Jims. No, no, don't do that. That's Just false. go get the Just app. You can get the information. Get the GoMart app. All right, check it out. Thanks for people. <laughs> <laughs> we went to black screen there, didn't we? All right, that must mean that we're done. That was a sign. That we've was a sign. En- we've paid enough for the studio. We're out. See you.